more times than not, the Aggies are going to win the head-to-head quarterback battle this season. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefanak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody had an outstanding weekend watching some baseball. We will talk about the Aggies winning the regional. We will talk about who they're playing in the super regional. That will be our conversation in segment three. Huge weekend of baseball. Proud of this team. Excited for the upcoming weekend. So that'll be a conversation in segment three. But, you know, on Friday, we had a conversation with our Locked on Auburn host, Zach Blackery. And one of the big conversations in that game was, you know, I think Zach was arguing that the talent gap was closer than I was giving it credit for between these two rosters. But my pushback was, okay, I'll, I'll perhaps give you that. But... The quarterback differential, in my opinion, is greater than I think uh, Zach was given a credit for. And so we kind of had back and forth, and I let him try and convince me. X, Y, Z. Point of bringing this up is I want to discuss, I want to run through the nine games against, you know, solid teams, not your, um, your easier games. And I want to say, hey, do I believe Texas A&M has an advantage at quarterback, a disadvantage? And then I have one toss-up. But, spoiler, Texas A&M is going to win the quarterback battle more times than they're going to lose it this season. And that is just another reason why I believe the Aggies can outperform expectations. So, we're going to go in order of these games. Let's start with Notre Dame, with Riley Leonard. Former, ironically, which once again, this will be the one of the funnier storylines because Coach El- Elko was Riley Leonard's coach last year at Duke. Riley Leonard and Coach Elko are close. They're, they're, you know, they're no bad blood there, but it's going to be fun to watch them duke it out on the field this year. Um, but I gave the advantage here to Riley Leonard, but I'll tell you this. There's only one quarterback, in my opinion, on this list, and we'll get to that, who I I think is the clear, there's no debate. There's no, not even a debate. And we'll get to who that is here in a little bit. But I give the edge to Riley Leonard, but I do believe that at home, a healthy uh, Connor Wigman, ready to get back on the football field, can outplay him. So, you know, do you want to give the advantage to Riley Leonard? Do you want to give the, the advantage to Connor Wigman? I think this one's really close. See, there's another one that I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give the edge to the quarterback, but but it's I'm going to say it's closer than Manny imagined. I believe this one, everyone can agree this should be a little bit close. Um, a lot of respect for Riley Leonard. I think he's a great player. Wasn't a super highly ranked guy. You know, worked hard, developed. But... I don't believe he is. Um, I don't believe he is, is. Is I think he's a little bit overhyped, and I think Connor Wigman's a lot underhyped. So I think you even those two things out, and I think it shows you this. This could be closer than people are giving it credit for. Is kind of my argument here. So while advantage Notre Dame in this battle, I do believe it's closer than many are giving it credit to be. Then we've got the Florida game with Graham Mertz. Listen, I am giving the advantage here to Connor Brigman. Okay. This is one. I think this is the only yes I have. When it comes to, or this is the only one where I, I believe Connor Rigman is better than the other quarterback that I think some might disagree with. Um, and so there's another one. We'll, we'll get to the other one here in a minute. But 
Um, I just I think Mertz is a really good game manager. I think he's a good quarterback. I do. I think he's a solid quarterback. He really outperformed my expectations last year for the Gators. Um, and I think people are hoping he'll take another step this year. I, I've just discussed, I just don't think he's as talented as Connor Wigman. I think Graham Mertz is a great quarterback. He's a game manager. He's a solid player. But his upside is definitely nowhere near Connor Wigman's. And once again, you could do this list again at the end of the year. I think there's a chance that um, Texas A&M goes eight and one when it comes to quarterback, you know, play when you know when you when you look when you compare quarterback play at the end of the season. I think there's a chance the Aggies go eight and one. Um, but right now, you have to look at it from a the season hasn't started yet perspective. And so, for a player like um, like Mertz, I think that this will probably be split down the middle. Um, I think you almost have this in toss-up category, but I was just looking at an SEC quarterbacks ranking list, one that I really like because that Connor Wigman six, which is you know I, I love that he was above a couple quarterbacks that I you don't see him above in most lists. Mertz being one of those, but I think it's true. I think Mertz is once again a solid quarterback game manager, not an elite SEC quarterback, um, and that's why I give the Aggies the advantage here. In game three, we have. Taylon Green for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And yes, I do believe, not, and this is the one of the ones that's pretty easy to say, but that um that Connor Wigman is the better quarterback here. I I don't think there's much debate to that. I think that I think that Green is, is a good quarterback. I do. I think that he's a player that can do a good job replacing KJ Jefferson and can do a good job. Um, you know, I, I mean, hopefully helping Arkansas, helping, uh, you know, obviously Coach Pittman hold on to his job and Coach Petrino try and really get back into this when it comes to being an OC. Um, but he's, he's just, Taylor Green's not better than Connor Rigman. Well, I believe he's a very solid quarterback. He's a good player. I think he has a chance to really outperform expectations. I think that he, I think that Taylor Green is an underrated quarterback. I do believe that. But I think, as I said a moment ago, I also believe Connor Wigman is an underrated quarterback, and I just think Connor's better, you know. And that's the reality here. I think Taylor Green, once again, will outperform expectations, but he's not better than Connor Wigman. So the next name here is our neck is our is our uh, next no, and that is Brady Cook of Mizzou. One, I would love to have put this in toss-up category. I, I think that Brady Cook, once again, I mean, when I says with no disrespect to him, he's a great, a great player, a great quarterback. But I, I do think he's a guy who, you know, he's a game, he's a game manager. I, I don't like there's there's some quarterbacks on this list that are elite, really good players. But I think that Brady Cook and Graham Mertz, their job is to go out there and be a game manager. You're not trying to win a game. You're trying to not lose a game. And then the game managers have games where they go win games for your team. That's reality. So it's not like they can't do that. It's just they're not going to do that every game. They're going to do that some games. In other games, they'll give you enough to win the game. And that's what I believe that Brady Cook is. I, while I think Missouri is going to be good, and he's got a really good player with the receiver and, and Burden, he's throwing the ball to – I think that he you have to rank him above Connor Rigman, but he's a name, in all honesty, rather than there too, that I think that you could if you do this in at the end of the season and Connor Rigman has the year that I'm expecting him to, I think that there's a world where Brady Cook isn't as um doesn't gets outplayed by Connor Rigman. Not saying it's a guarantee, but I'm saying there's a world where that becomes a reality. So we're going to talk about the other quarterbacks the Aggies are facing off with, and, and I'm going to say, hey, Connor Wigman, better or worse than this guy. We're going to talk about the 2025 recruiting class and why this thing is really outperforming expectations right now. We'll have those conversations coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I got to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn. In jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster 
and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role in a given month. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites, so if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional with LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So moving on here to our next quarterback, and that is Blake Shapin of Mississippi State. Another player who, you know, y'all know my thoughts on Mississippi State. I think that they're going to be fine. I think that Lebby is a is a coach who can come in and he can be successful. I think he needs a little bit more time because it's just a little bit harder to recruit at Mississippi State than it is at a Texas A&M and some other schools, like even you know, Hugh, Hugh Freeze came in and recruited really quickly. And then you, you've seen other coaches do the same thing um, early on. You know, Mike Elko is a great example of that. But that's because I think it's easier to recruit at Texas A&M, of course, than it is Mississippi State. So I think that Levy is going to turn things around. I don't think this is the year. And I know that this is a game on the road at Mississippi State in Starkville. But – I still just – I don't think Blake Shapin's going to outperform Connor Wigman. Obviously, he's a guy, a little bit older guy, played some snaps. So that's that's one thing he's got going for him. But I just – I'm not a believer in Blake Shapin in it, being an elite quarterback. I think he could be a solid game manager that could help Mississippi State win a game or two they maybe aren't supposed to. You know, that's, that's reality here. But I don't believe he's going to be this awesome, elite SEC quarterback that – can really just take things over. You know, I, I think he's a guy that he's ranked in that, you know, 14, 15, 13 range when it comes to SEC quarterbacks, and I think it's where he belongs, to, you know, to be. He's a, he's, a, he's a fine quarterback in this or in a really good conference, um, but I, he is, does not give Mississippi State an advantage over the Aggies in the quarterback position. The next name, and this is my toss-up, is LSU's Nesmeyer. I think that these two quarterbacks are eerily similar in the fact they were super highly ranked guys that we, um, you know, you, you, we've seen Nuss Meyer play once. It was last year in the bowl game. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's gotten in some other games in, in garbage time, but, you know, play a legitimate game once. And then we've seen Connor Wigman in, you know, nine games between two seasons because of injuries to others, injuries to him. So obviously you've seen more of Connor Wigman, but we haven't seen a lot of both of these guys but they're both super talented out of high school quarterbacks with super high upsides. And that is why I think it is, is, it is very fair to list this as a toss up. I think that some might list this as a loss for Texas A&M when it comes to the quarterback ranking um, quarterbacks. Do you have the advantage or the disadvantage? I think some might list that as a, as a, as a disadvantage for Texas A&M, but I'm just telling you, when I look at this, I really believe that I listed it as a toss-up, to be fair. But I do believe that Connor Wigman ends up having a better season than Nuss Meyer, and I think that Nuss Meyer is going to have a good season. Like, y'all know, y'all every day is here at Lockdown Aggies know my opinion on, on Connor Wigman. I think that he is due, if he can stay on, on the field, um, and these weapons end up being as good as I think they can be, I think he's going to have a really, really, really good season for – um, the Aggies and, and outplay a player like Nesmeyer, who I think is going to be really good. So that's my toss up. If you lean, he's better. I get it. If you lean that he's worse, I, I get it. But um, I just think the fair way to go about this was to put that as a toss up. Then we've got Lenore Sellers of South Carolina, another player who can use his legs, high upside guy. Another dude like Taylor Green, who I think could outperform expectations, but I still don't. I think even if he outperforms expectations, he's not going to outperform uh, Connor Rigman. So Sellers, honestly, and I take Sellers over over Green of of um, 
Arkansas when it comes to the most significant sleeper in the SEC. I don't think you can really list Connor Rigman as a sleeper. Um, just because I think that he's a, you know, he's a good, he's a really good player that it's going to be hard to list him. It's going to be hard to list Connor Rigman as, as a sleeper because I think everybody would kind of call that. But Lenore Sellers is, is an SEC quarterback that it's fair to call him a sleeper. Um, so I think I think while the Aggies have the advantage there, I do think he's going to outperform expectations. Then you've got uh, Auburn's Peyton Thorne, where once again I believe the um, Aggies have an advantage with Connor Rigman. I think Peyton Thorne, if you go back to the episode on Friday, you can listen to Zach's justification for why he's going to have a good season, and it's mostly due to him having solid weapons, and he does have good weapons. They, they did a good job in the portal, getting the Lambert Smith kid that Texas a was after, Taking that, taking a Cam Coleman. So, you know, they, they've um they've got some solid receivers over there, but I don't believe they're um I just don't believe that Peyton Thorne is going to give Auburn an advantage over Texas A&M when it comes to the quarterback position. And then lastly, this is my resounding no, and it's Quinn Ewers. I um as much as I hate to have to even discuss this, I I think he's really good. I would love to sit here and say Quinn Ewers is awful. We'll get to make fun of Texas here in a minute when it comes to baseball, so don't worry. We'll get to um, – they're not going to get to listen to this ep- full episode um, getting giddy from what I'm saying. So, But um, Quinn Ewers is a great player. I really do believe that. I think he's going to have a solid season. I think this is the game where um, – this is the one where it's it's a resounding – the Longhorns have the advantage here. Now, not to say that on any given day, Connor Wigman can't outplay him because he can. But it's just if I was predicting what would happen if it all went chalk, I think you would have to say Ewers uh, has a better game than Connor Wigman. So that's my thought. So this is what's interesting. If you count the toss up with um, if you count the toss up with Nussmeyer, that is five, three, and one in these nine games when it comes to. Will Texas A&M have an advantage or a disadvantage at the quarterback position, which I think is a very interesting conversation to have. And, yeah, I think that um, that it shows you, hey, this team, um, the Aggies are going to have a really good quarterback, as we know, in, in uh, Connor Wigman, who is going to give you an advantage in a lot of games. So the other conversation I want to have is talk just real quick for a few minutes about how the Aggies are outperforming expectations right now on the recruiting trail. And when I say expectations, we know Texas A&M recruits. We, we know that. They recruit under Coach Fisher. That was a concern of mine for Coach Elko. You know, listen, at Duke, go look at his recruiting numbers. He was doing fine, but it, it's just hard to get really good players at Duke. That's just the reality, if you, unless you're um, playing, playing round ball. Um, unless it's when we're talking basketball, if you're talking football, it's hard to get these solid recruits partially because NIL money, that's just the reality of the situation. And, um, so it's hard to get those guys. And so that's why I was kind of like, will Mike Elko be able to recruit in the sec or recruit as a head coach? Like, like he's going to need you to succeed. And I wasn't in my head. It wasn't like, no, no chance in my head. I was like, we got to see it. He needs to prove it. And to this point, the way he finished out the 24 class, holding on to a Terry Bussey, going to get some of those talented players he pulled in last minute, I think that he's very much proving that he can recruit at an elite level. So the 2025 class, I think, is going to exceed expectations. Right now, this recruiting class currently sits at seventh best in all of college football. You've got your quarterback in Hassan Longstreet, which is a huge key. I always say go get your quarterback because then getting receivers, tight ends, running backs, players want to play linemen, offensive players want to play with really good quarterbacks. And now Longstreet on 24-7 Sports here is officially listed as a five-star. So he's a really good quarterback that people are going to want to play with. So um, you've got your quarterback. That's huge. You've got uh, um, how many top 250 players? One, two, three, four. You've got four, or no, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five t- top 250 players. You've got three, no, excuse me, four, four top 250 corners. 
You're fixing that position. You got a really good cornerback. You've got some high upside four star offensive linemen who are really excited about 6'5, 270, 6'4, 275. You got a running back in Ryden who I think is going to have a massive career at Texas AM. Uh, you got some interior guys, Tyler Thomas, Connor Carty. You got some linebackers, Kelvion Riggins. I mean, this is just this class really landed rank, the D lineman who I really like. This class is going to be really good and it's nowhere near completed you currently have 13 commits coach oko is not done yet and i think that there's a legitimate chance that this class ends up being top five so it coach oko is really killing it expectation wise when it comes to high school recruiting and i'm really happy to see because that was the one huge question mark i had when the aggies hired him and he has answered to that and done a great job all right it's finally time to talk about the aggies getting the regional win going three and zero in the regional moving on to the super regional we'll talk about who they're playing we'll talk about what we saw in the regional coming up right here on locked on aggies it's winner take all time in the nba and nhl i believe that we have our uh, stanley cup final and our NBA Finals. You got Celtics Mavs in the NBA Finals, and it's Oilers Panthers, which is a really interesting. Um, I, you know, I played hockey growing up, and I have I, I do not watch as much hockey as I used to, but those are two teams that's hey, I mean it's easy to root for either of them. Um, but and then you got Luca and the Mavs going against Tatum, Jalen Brown, Porzingis of the Celtics. It's gonna be a fun, fun series. Obviously, um, I'm sure we got some Mavericks fans here, so it's going to be fun. But FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to, to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com to check out. It out. Check out the uh, app. Go check out America's number one sports book. So the baseball team goes three and zero in the regional. They are able to take down the uh, able to take down Grambling, able to take down the Longhorns, and then finish things out against. Uh, Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. Great job by this team. So let's run through the numbers here. So in the win over Grambling, you got 3.1 innings out of Tanner Jones. Give up seven hits, but he struck out four, didn't give up any runs. Uh, Brad Rudis comes in 1.2 innings, strike out, no hits. Then uh, Weston Moss had a great outing, one walk, but three strikeouts. Um, and then Armstrong comes in, two hits, three strikeouts. You have three total strikeouts, no runs. Get the huge win. Did a great job of not having to use your guys. And then exactly as we expected, you save Prager for the Longhorns. Prager and Eschenbach. So Prager, four hits, two earned runs, seven strikeouts. Eschenbach, 4.2 wings, not a single hit. One walk, one strikeout. Just absolutely shoving Huge win there. Um, the bats in this game, you only, I mean, you didn't. It was funny. It wasn't a game where you saw a ton of um, offense. It was a game where you just saw enough. Ted Burton hits the little, put it in play, make them make mistakes. Smack it, hit the base, leads to a huge run in the 11th inning. You get the extra inning win over the Longhorns. Of course, sending them to the loser's bracket where they did end up losing to the Raging Cajuns, ending their season by Longhorns. Thanks for showing up. Hope you had a good time. Better luck next season. You know, I um, I saw Texas. I saw someone, you know, um, someone, a Texas fan tweet when the um, ladies the softball um, team lost to the Texas softball team. Someone said, um, you know, nothing sweeter than Aggie tears. And that um that upset me. So now listen, nothing better than Longhorn tears. Goodbye. Maybe next year. But 
Um, so you move on to the game against the Raging Cajuns, and you get 13 hits in this game. You get two from Montgomery. You get four RBIs from Monty in this game. You get two hits from Jace Laviolette. You get two hits from Jackson Appel. You get a couple hits from uh, Travis Chestnut. Uh, and then um, in this game, Grohovac sets the freshman homer record. Just all around, you get a homer from Grohovac, Montgomery, Hayden Schott, uh, Camarillo, and Caden Sorrell in this game, leading to the 9-4 win and a super regional berth. So you go 3-0. Before we talk about the super, which we're not going to dive into it today, Monty got hot this weekend. He had three hits in the first game, one hit in the second, and then two hits in the third game. So did a really good job of getting hot. You needed him to get hot this um for the postseason, and hey, yeah, I think he did it at the right time, which would be so massive for this team as they get ready to host the Oregon Ducks in a Super Regional. Next weekend, Oregon's coming to town, Super Regional. Going to be fun. You are two wins away from Omaha, and you don't have to leave home to do it. Two wins away, ladies and gentlemen. We will break down Oregon. We will run through all of this later in the week, but once again, you are two wins away from Omaha. Proud of this team. Did a great job. Sitting home your rival. Sweep the um, regional. Now it's time for the Ducks. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. Hope everybody has an outstanding rest of their day today, and we will see you tomorrow.